Good morning, everyone. And yes, I'm back out on the road. Thank God I'm going off to do something. Today, I'm going to go and visit one of my mates who's got a gallery, Fautique, in uh, Lemons and Spa. And we're going to have a look at his gallery and see what it is from a photographer's point of view to get into a gallery, what goes into a gallery. Um, yeah, hopefully it's a nice little insight for you guys to hear from an owner of a gallery and what they have to do. Um, yeah, I think it should be a good day. And I'm just so looking forward to getting out and meeting mates that I haven't seen in such a long time because of lockdown and everything else. So it's nice to have a good catch up time. See you in a bit. here today and I'm here with Nat Colson who's got this fantastic gallery, Fautique. So what I'd like to ask Nat here is what made him decide to have such an amazing gallery? Well thanks Terry, I appreciate you having me on. I decided to open this gallery along with my wife Ruth uh, because we really passionately believe in photography as art and a, an, a, an expressive important form of art. And across the UK, especially outside of London, you don't really find too many galleries either that uh, specialize in photography or even more so will even accept photography. You know, most traditional galleries don't touch photography. And so we felt that, uh, you know, because I'm a photographic artist myself, uh, that number one, we wanted a place, of course, to show my work, but also that we could show and share the work of other photographers and artists as well, um, especially to serve kind of the Midlands um, and really all of the UK uh, from our base here in Leamington Spa. Yeah, that's one of the things I've noticed over the time since you've had the gallery is the different artists, what they call them, visiting artists that you've had over the time that's changed as well. And that's yeah. really nice to see that you can have other people. So. My question would be is that there's going to be a lot of photographers out there that have thought about going into a gallery, doing something like that, that wouldn't have the first clue about how a gallery operates from a photographer's point of view. How, how do they just approach them? Is it something you have to go on a waiting list for? Does your work have to be a certain standard? What's what, So many questions, really. Yeah, there are a lot of questions. And to be honest, for any artist, not just photographers, but for any artist uh, looking to gain any kind of commercial representation, um, there are kind of established procedures, I guess you'd call them, or, um, you know, uh, professional ways to approach uh, either a gallery or an agent or a rep, you know, anybody who would potentially be representing the work. In my view, because I'm an artist and I've been a, a, an artist much longer than I've been a gallery owner, um, I have found uh, that it, it is typically very difficult to approach a gallery just out of the blue uh, and, uh, and have them, uh, number one, have the time really to, uh, to, to seriously review the work, but also uh, if, if you come and, and approach a gallery from nowhere, then you're really going to be put to the bottom of the pile, right? So as with everything in business, it's all about relationships and um, you know, forming the right kinds of partnerships. And in all cases, I would say that some kind of a, a personal referral or um, even just uh, knowing what other artists are represented by the gallery is a really good start. Now, I, since opening the gallery, of course, as you'd probably expect, I'm approached by a lot of photographers and sometimes even other artists who aren't totally clear that we really specialize in photography. Yeah. And when I get a, an inquiry sort of out of nowhere, um, it does in all honesty, feel like a bit of an interruption, like, hey, hey, look at me, look at my stuff, isn't this great? And, you know, yeah. and I've, I've got far too much going on, really, to field every inquiry that comes to me that way. So it, I, I refer to this sort of sequence of steps. Um, I mean, I certainly don't mind getting an email to introduce, you know, an artist or, and, and to share the work. 
Um, I don't normally uh, like to receive, uh, you know, portfolios in the post. Um, I generally prefer to, if it's going to be a face-to-face in-person meeting, I would certainly always rather have had some conversations, you know, ahead of time. So it's about kind of taking the right steps and yeah. getting to know one another. Um, keeping in mind that as a gallery and as a, as a dealer of photography, that the selections that I make of who we represent and the work that we put in the gallery is going to be determined by a, a variety of factors. And unfortunately, it's not only the strength of the work, although that is by far the most important thing, of course. Yeah. I mean, and so in terms of the work itself, I'm really only going to be seriously interested in discussing uh, any kind of representation or exhibition with photographers who show a very clear identifiable vision for the work. I mean, consistency as well. Consistency yeah. and, and sort of, I want to be able to look at a portfolio or a website and right away understand what they care about, you know, what they have to say. You know, I, I mentioned at the beginning that I believe that photography is a form, photographic art, let's say, is a form of expression. Now, this is very different than, say, documentary photography or photojournalism, you know, things that are meant to illustrate. So with the photographer approaching, do they need to match the style of the gallery? Is that important? I.e., you know, if you've got landscapes, does it need to be all landscapes or would you take something different? <laughs> Difficult question, got you. <laughs> Was it just personal I, taste from the gallery owner, basically? I think that you would find with most galleries that what the owner or uh, the manager of the gallery selects to show certainly is in alignment with their personal style yes. and their personal taste. Um, to that point, what I'm most interested in showing are uh, things of beauty. Yeah. Okay. And now with photography, as with most other kinds of art, not every picture is pretty. You know, there are, are quite a lot of great photographs, including some really iconic, you know, very well known, important kind of photographs yeah. that although, you know, the subject matter might be compelling, maybe they're not so nice to look at for whatever reason. We exist to sell photography and photographic art as interior decor, right? The, the, what we like to sell and what we show here is intended to be hung up on the wall and enjoyed and appreciated. So as a general rule, I don't normally uh, prefer to show work that is um, controversial yeah. or uh, photography that maybe, you know, makes a strong social statement. Um, you know, it, generally speaking, pictures that show the ills of the world. I suppose it's more of a gallery than an exhibition. So if you're an exhibition, yes, you might want to shock people and do stuff. But as a gallery, you want people to enjoy it in their homes. And I, I do think there's yeah. a lot to that. Now, obviously, that still leaves a fairly wide latitude, you yeah. know, because what I think is beautiful, you know, maybe you wouldn't <laughs> yeah. agree, right? So it is still very subjective. But that's your, uh, that's your prerogative, really, isn't it, as the gallery owner? It is. And yeah. so generally, I would select things that I think are, are lovely to look at and that yeah. might make nice decor, right? So that, 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 unfortunately, that means that if somebody brings me photography that is very strong in its own way and has a clear, cohesive vision and maybe yeah. is very well executed, maybe it's still not the best fit because if it doesn't work very well as yeah. decor, for example. Yeah. So really, people have got to do their research. When they're looking at galleries, see what stuff they've got. Is that going to match what audience are they going for? Don't just go willy-nilly because you're going to be wasting time, everyone's time at the end of the day. That's the most important yeah. tip, I think, that we've, we've talked about is that research on the part of the artist, and this, again, this isn't just for photography, but yeah, any, yeah. anybody who's approaching a gallery or a dealer of any kind, you need to know that your vision 
is in alignment with theirs, right? Because you're looking to form a partnership. Yeah. Um, very often, I get approached, and as I'm sure all galleries do, uh, by people who just happen to, you know, catch the fact that oh, there's a, a gallery open on this street. You yeah. know, let's see if they'll take my work. That's never going to work, yeah. honestly. I mean, it, it is a partnership. It's a collaboration. We work very closely with our artists. And part of this is because I'm an artist myself, yeah. I mean, I can view it as an artist and from an artist's perspective. And I'm looking to build a little family here. You know, yeah. I mean, nice. And so if, if I'm approached by somebody that, you know, just, again, just comes from out of the blue and says, hey, here's my photography. Do you want to sell some of it? <laughs> That doesn't really go very far. Yeah, you've got to put the groundwork in first. Everything in life, in terms of any business that you want to do or social, to be fair, you've got to put the groundwork in. Nothing comes for free. You've got to put some effort into it. You're not just going to wake up one day and go to a gallery, here you go, here's all my work, and they're going to accept it. And I right. think, you know, you've, you've got to be prepared for a bit of hard work. Well, that raises another really important point, I think, that most photographers and artists are under the impression that if they could only just find a gallery or some representative to sell their work, yeah. you know, then they can, you know, and I'll, I'll admit <laughs> that, it, you know, throughout my 20 years as a photographic artist, often I've wished, can't I just make pictures and have somebody else sell them for me? <laughs> it's a nice idea, but that's not really how it works, you know, yeah. and, and the, the collaboration and the partnership between an artist and the dealer is is a very you know crucial and a kind of a, a, a revered and respected kind of a relationship that it's it's not at all casual and so to do that the artists have to be sure that it's good for them as yeah. well you know and so your point about research it is very much the same with any kind of business that you need to know that you know the business goals are are in alignment absolutely brilliant well, I hope you're listening to that and you're going to take some of that on board before you go and approach galleries. But it is a great thing to do and it's worth doing. One thing I've noticed that you've got at the moment that you're involved in, there's a couple of things actually that I've noticed, which I think is amazing. And that's a local exhibition that you've been involved in and setting up. Yeah. And I just, I think that is a fantastic way. And I think also think for any budding I'll say that again, any budding photographers that want to get into galleries and get noticed, this is a great way of doing it as well because you're going to get your work noticed and out there. And I just think it's the kudos of having an exhibition and your work put into an exhibition gives you a little bit more when you want to take that next step and go to a gallery. If you can say my work's been exhibited here, this, that and the other, that's going to give you a great step. Do you want to tell us about this exhibition you've got on? Absolutely. So it's called Leamington Photo Fest. And it is open for any UK residents to enter, okay? And you don't need to be a professional photographer or even a serious oh, I can photographer. Enter. <laughs> yeah, <that's it. laughs> any, anybody can enter yeah. um, using any device. And you don't have to take it with a, an expensive camera. You know, we were expecting to see a lot of photos, you know, made with smartphones and, right. and so forth. That's what I'm uh, doing this afternoon. <laughs> so Leamington Photo Fest runs all through this summer. And uh, entries are going to close at the end of September. And then we're going to select the 50 best photographs that have been submitted. And we're going to host a, a group exhibition here. Brilliant. So we are fully expecting that most of the people who enter will, A, never have had their work shown in a gallery before. And B, uh, maybe have never even had their work printed, especially yeah. if it is something made from a phone. Right. Yeah. So to that point, the only requirements to the entries are that, number one, it had to have been, uh, the photograph has to be made within the boundaries of Warwick District, and the website okay. has, a, has a map of what that is. So yeah. it, it is very much designed to be local to Leamington, Warwick, Kenilworth, you know, kind of this Makes area. Makes sense, yeah. It's, yeah it's, it's, it's I mean, it's, it's, it's really to, yeah. to build local community spirit. The other thing is that the photos need to be taken this year. Yeah. in 2021. Um, but aside from that, we're really looking forward to getting, you know, any kind of entries. What we're looking for are the things that inspire people. You know, what, what do you find interesting and beautiful? What do you love? Yeah. What's special about where we live and work? Uh, and so our vision for the exhibition then of the, the 50 best photos that we will e exhibit here for a month, they're all through November, yeah. uh, will be to, to really uh, bring a, 
bring a focus to you know the beauty and the the special character of of Leamington and our local area. Brilliant. So if you fancy having a day trip out to Leamington, come along, take some photos, enter the competition. You never know you might be exhibited. I think mean, that's a great way of doing it. Personally, from a, a local thing, I think that's a fantastic thing to do. Really bring that community together. Also from a gallery point of view, getting it out there as well and giving other people the opportunity to get into a gallery, I think it's amazing. Well, this is one of the important things that I haven't mentioned yet, that one of the, the prizes, we are giving away a lot of awards and prizes and we're hosting yeah. an awards event and you know doing it properly. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the uh, awards is called the, the Gallery Choice and that's where uh, Ruth, uh, my wife and I, will select our favorite image from uh, the, the competition and we're going to be offering a solo exhibition in the gallery wow. for, to that photographer for next year. Wow, that's amazing. I really like that. I just, yeah, right. I am going to stay this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's fantastic. Right, I'm just going to get the camera because I want to have a look at a piece of your artwork over here. So this is one of the pieces I like. Now, Nat has got this fantastic ability of doing mixed art. So it's not just a photograph. He's taken a photograph and then he's done art on top. Do you want to explain more about your Absolutely. process? Absolutely. And it's actually, it's interesting that you would highlight that one because this is one of my favorite pieces of all time as well. This is kind of one of my signature pieces. Uh, it's called Waiting for Dawn. Okay. Um, it is very abstract. It's not actually a, a photograph, uh, a, a landscape of, of you know clouds and sunrise. It just yeah. that's what it reminds me. <laughs> of. So this photograph was made using intentional camera movement, and I've printed it onto canvas. I do all my own printing, and I also print for a lot of other photographers and artists. I print the photograph onto canvas, and then after I've stretched it onto the wooden stretcher bars, I use clear acrylic uh, to embellish the surface of okay. the canvas. So it's only clear. Yeah. There's no colored paint used. Okay. Um, but I use brushes. Sometimes I'll use sponges okay. or uh, palette knives yeah. and you kind of to scoop the paint wow. around. So I use the uh, the acrylic to bring out the texture and the kind of the, the contours of the image. So it does create, in the end, a mixed media yeah. artwork. I mean, it is very much photography based. What you see in the, the image itself, that is the photograph as I shot it. Um, but all of the texture over the top uh, has been applied afterward, uh, again, only using the clear. I absolutely, it's something I've never played with doing mixed materials and stuff like that to be fair and I just look at your stuff and go oh so beautiful I don't I, well, I wouldn't even attempt to do it because I just I wouldn't well, get it right. I mean I I would say everybody should have a go at it <laughs> I mean here's the thing though that that it is photography and then some yeah. right that I still view myself first and foremost as a photographer a photographic artist but to me the real joy of photography is to produce a tangible physical thing, yeah. right? So I'm, I'm one of the photographers who believes that an image is never finished until it's printed. So I always you know, yep. try and print as much of my work as possible. Yeah. And I've got a great partnership with Epson yeah. UK here. That's right. uh, I've always used Epson printers and we've got a, a large format Epson here in the gallery. So I love printing, right? Yeah. But I found over the years that just doing a print you know, even a nicely framed print, you know, in a frame under glass, to me that wasn't really getting all the way for me. So I, I developed this process. This is something that I've been working on really for, for many years um, to print onto different media, different types of materials, and then find different ways to embellish the work to produce not only something with, you know, more texture and kind of interesting, intricate detail, but because of the hand embellishing work that's done, they actually become a one of a kind original piece. Whereas with most other photography, you know, you could easily make, you know, multiple prints of, of the same image. When I do these types of works, so this one actually, this has been embellished with uh, gold foil. I use a, a gold foil transfer 
on this in addition to the acrylic. So I'm, I'm working with different materials. Uh, again, with the, the whole purpose is to try and create something of beauty, yeah. but also something that's totally unique. There's only, you know, it's one of a kind. There's only one just like this. And that it, it, it's the, the furthest expression of my photography. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I wish I could do more of that type of stuff. I mean, I, yeah. Well, come to a workshop. <laughs> come to I a mean, workshop. I, I teach a lot. I do classes and workshops. Um, you know, I do photo tours. Uh, we're, we're leading a retreat in France next year where we'll certainly do some of this kind of thing as well. Oh, wow. But yeah. a, again, for me, and this is what's most important, that photography as art needs to be very, very personal. Yeah. And that means to do what you love and, you know, find the, find the confidence to, uh, to have your own voice. And, you know, in, in my case, it ended up being mixed media, you know, it's, yeah. it, it's still very much photography, but, you know, I, I know other photographers who uh, sometimes will, you know, print on fabric or, you know, you can, uh, these days you can print on any kind of material. Yeah. And so, you know, doing straight photographic prints as with, you know, I mean, you can see that I do, I do these as well. You know, here's some of my kind of abstract black and white. I think that's what's so amazing about this is the fact that you are taking something that can be replicated a number of times and turn it into a unique piece. And I love that because I do think that with my photography. I take a piece, but I think everyone can have that. And yeah. it's just... Especially it's shooting digital. Yeah. Right? Exactly. When it's a digital yeah. image on a hard drive it's not serving its purpose, you know, yeah. just be first and foremost, not being printed. But, you know, even sometimes even the, the print isn't, you know, yeah. going all the way. So, yeah, I mean, I just, I love abstraction. I love, yep. and abstract photography to me um, is, is the most challenging um, and, and most expressive form of, of photography, you know, from my standpoint. And to be able to, produce work that, um, you know, people hang in their homes and their businesses. I mean, it's just, it, it's a real, yeah. it's a real blessing. Yeah, it's fantastic, mate. I really love it. Thank you. I want to thank you so much for spending some time with us today. It has been amazing. Oh, turn this around. It has been amazing to come and see some of your new work as well as some of the old work as well that I just adore, but I really love that piece. Well, thank you. Yeah, well, I, I really appreciate so, the, the chance to, to, to take it with me. It's great. <laughs> I'll, I'll yeah. make you a good price. <laughs> Salesman, that's what it is. <laughs> Gallery is superb, mate. And I, th I thanks for sharing a few insights into that as well. Yeah, Hopefully, yeah, you know, I hope that, that was helpful. Yeah. It is all a process. There's no, yeah. no quick and easy answer, yeah. at least not. What's my, my wife's uh, favorite saying is there's no shortcut to any place worth going. Yep, too right, too right. <laughs> All right. Thanks very much, mate. Thank We're you. doing hands, we're doing fists. Let's do hands. <laughs> yeah, that's Proper it. handshake Proper again. Handshake, yeah. yeah. Thanks very much, mate. All right, thank you. I hope you like that little insight into a gallery. Maybe that will inspire you to go and create some work to go into a gallery. Maybe it'll inspire you to go and contact some gallery owners, to be fair. Just remember, nothing's for free. You've got to prepare for doing this sort of work. You can't just go willy nilly. You're not, you might drop really lucky, but I doubt it to be fair. Everything is hard work in this world. You've got to work for it. But let me know if you've had success down below, because you know what? We're going to check your gallery out. That'd be fantastic. How easy was it for you to get into? Um, I've been in a few galleries over the years, had great success when I've been in the galleries as well. So it's always been worthwhile. And I, it's nothing like that feeling of seeing your work up in a gallery. It's fantastic. So I would encourage you that if you are thinking about it, just go and do it. Start putting a body of work together that's, as Nat said, coherent. Coherent is the word here. Um, keeping it coherent is really, really important. You've got to have a theme to everything or else it's just the odd little piece of work here and there. And that's not enough for a gallery. They want something extra. They want the whole package. They've got to sell you at the end of the day. Get your story straight in terms of your bio and what you're putting onto there. Have it consistent. Um, have it engaging. That's the other thing as well. Interesting and engaging. Look forward to everything. See you on the next one. Yeah.